Hello dear students, I am Dr. Nisha, Assistant Professor in the PG Department of English, Terezin College, Mysore. The topic chosen for today's presentation is The Zoo Story, a one-act play by the American playwright Edward Albee. Albee was born in Washington, D.C. on 12th March 1928. He was a prolific writer known for his biting wit and for his extensive use of of the principles of absurdity. The Zoo Story, written in 1958, was Albee's first major play in one act, completed in not more than three weeks. The play received the credit of having promoted the birth of American absurdist drama. The theatre of the absurd is a term coined by Martin Eslin in his book titled The Same written in 1962, which emerged as a reaction to World War II. It takes Albert Camus' existential philosophy as the basis, expressing the meaninglessness of human existence. Playwrights commonly associated with the theatre of the absurd include Samuel Beckett, Eugene Ionesco, Arthur Adamoff, Harold Pinter, to mention a few. Edward Albee was one of the best contemporary American playwrights influenced by these great absurd playwrights. Working in the style of the theatre of the absurd, Albee wrote the zoo story exploring themes of isolation, loneliness, social disparity and miscommunication. The zoo story. The title may sound normal and simple, one may think it's a family trip to the local zoo, seeing some monkeys or tigers. Maybe they have popcorn. No, it's not. It's an absurdist one-act play with the title and the incidents absurd. There are no monkeys or popcorn, but just two characters, Jerry and Peter. The title and Jerry's visit to the zoo may be explained related to his psychological breakdown. Often when life gets chaotic, it's compared to a zoo. The Plot Overview The zoo story was originally titled Peter and Jerry after the two main characters of the play. The entire play begins and ends in Central Park, New York. The play opens on a Sunday afternoon when Peter, an upper middle class family man and a publishing executive in his mid 40s is reading a book, smoking a pipe, sitting on a bench in Central Park. Jerry, a carelessly dressed transient, a passerby, in his late 30s approaches Peter and announces him, repeating that he is coming from the Central Park Zoo. It should be noted here, both are strangers to each other. Peter's apparent reluctance to talk does not disturb Jerry, who initiates a conversation. To Peter's dismay, Jerry points out that Peter will likely get cancer from smoking, which obviously annoys him. Jerry continues to ask Peter questions about his life, career and interests and succeeds in making Peter respond to his questions. Not waiting for Peter to ask him about his own life, Jerry tells him about his miserable apartment in the Upper West Side in New York. He describes about his unpleasant neighbors and the junk he has as his possessions, including two empty picture frames and that he is completely alone in life. His parents died when he was young and his only significant romantic relationship was a short friendship he had with another boy as a teenager. Jerry speaks with contempt about his landlady, a drunken, lusty woman who constantly troubled him. He tried to befriend her dog which only responded by attacking him. After a repeated and unsuccessful attempts at friendship, Jerry decided to kill the dog 
feeding it a poisoned hamburger. Although it made the dog sick, eventually it recovered and began to leave Jerry alone. Peter, irritated by Jerry's interference into his privacy, decides to leave but Jerry forces him to stay back. He also tries to occupy the bench Peter is sitting on but Peter becomes more possessive of the bench. The reader, like Peter, is alarmed when Jerry pulls a knife and insists Peter to fight. When Peter refuses, he gives the knife to Peter, who holds it out to protect himself. Suddenly, Jerry charges and falls himself on the knife. Initially hysteric, he soon calms down and accepts his death. We sympathize with him when he thanks Peter, using his last energy to wipe Peter's fingerprints off the knife handle, so that Peter will not be accused of his murder. The play ends with Peter running off before anybody could notice that Jerry is dying. The play leaves the reader with a weird sense as it relates to a strange experience of man sitting on a bench in a park and having a strange man or a complete stranger coming to him, forcing him into a conversation, talking about the zoo he had just visited, trying to steal his bench and then kill himself. The reader consequently is forced to conclude this as absurdity and Albie has really worked in a style known as the theatre of the absurd. We find Albie trying to say that the people in his play don't think or act right. The play involves the themes of existentialism, absurdity, an understanding of the American society during the 1950s would be essential to analyze the play based on the following themes. Though a short one-act play, it has within it varied themes. Capitalism and the American Dream When the play was written in 1958, Americans were trying hard to obtain what is called the American Dreams. The consequences of the Second World War had left an indelible mark in the minds of the Americans then. The number of people dead, the ruined buildings, diseases, the collapsed economic conditions, a broken social structure leading to joblessness and poverty were the most common and depressing scenes at that time. Deriving sources from such a critical social conditions, Albee could employ the various absurdist techniques like themes of existentialism to write this one-act play. After World War II, the US economy boomed and a middle-class lifestyle was easily attainable than before. Many of Albee's contemporaries, the prominent among them Arthur Miller and Richard Yates, were quite satirical about American materialism. Albee presents two extreme economic situations through the portrayals of his two characters, Peter and Jerry. Jerry suffering from an economic crisis and Peter enjoying an economic boom. These prevailing social conditions led people into a kind of isolation and loneliness. With just these two characters, Peter and Jerry, we come to know Peter, who represents the capitalist society, has a family, wife, daughters and pets. Whereas Jerry, who represents an economic crisis, has nothing except for some picture frames which symbolize Jerry's loneliness and a family was just a memory for him. The sense of isolation and loneliness forces a person into intimacy with strangers.
Intimacy could be counted as another theme where Albie tries to show Jerry as trying to be intimate with strangers because to Jerry it means not just friendship but a necessity to have someone to understand and be compassionate. Jerry's ideas about intimacy does not seem to comply with existing and established social norms which do not often encourage intimacy between strangers. It needs to be noted that Jerry trying to be intimate even with strangers is a clear evidence of his isolation and deep sense of loneliness. Jerry only tries to look for someone who can understand his opinions on modern society and empathize with his bitter past. A very important factor to conclude the play as having features of absurdity is language and communication. The play, though called the zoo story, never actually tells the reader what happens at the zoo. The opening scene of the play shows Jerry trying to repeat saying that he had been to the zoo but ultimately doesn't say what happened there. Peter hardly understands what Jerry says, neither does the reader. One of the features of the theatre of the absurd is that language doesn't work right. This leads to failure in communication which could be seen as yet another theme of the play. Failure in communication is seen happening both in linguistic and philosophical levels. We find Peter and Jerry not able to connect their differences. On the linguistic level, the men have trouble, especially Peter has trouble in understanding Jerry. For example, when Peter tells Jerry that he has two daughters, Jerry's query, if he is married, strikes a strange note Peter. The reason for this failure in communication is due to the fact that they come from two different socio-economic backgrounds. At the philosophical level, their opinions in life are so different that it impedes their ability to connect with each other. Peter, the privileged, and Jerry, the deprived. At the philosophical level, their opinions on life are so different that it impedes their ability to connect with each other. An example from the text would explain things better. In page 22 of the text, Peter states that people should not get everything they want and that a certain amount of deprivation, that is, they need to lack something in life to derive the real life experience. This statement is from Peter, a self-satisfied person, but to Jerry, who has experienced only suffering and misfortune, this would be a negative philosophy. The insensitivity in Peter's remark causes a disconnection between the two. Quite alarming, yet an acceptable reason to be considered as a theme is homosexuality, taking into account the prevailing American scene. Homosexuality was counted as a theme to escape from hardships, sense of alienation and loneliness. Jerry, coming from a lower middle class background, whose mother eloped with her lover, the father turned an alcoholic, obviously has a contempt to the opposite sex. His relationship with women turns to be abnormal and dissatisfactory. Jerry's contempt for his drunken, lustful landlady can be cited as an example here. These are some reasons which turn Jerry a homosexual. Jerry's appearance in the park, his desire to get attention, to be listened to and understood without any socio-economical class barrier, finding himself comfortable to talk with males, even strangers and his natural dislike for other sex labels him as a homosexual. Let us see how Albi makes use of symbols in the play. The zoo stands as the central symbol of isolation and absence of contact and communication. Everyone is seen separated from one another by bars. The empty picture frames shown as Jerry's only 
possession symbolize emptiness and alienation the two characters peter and jerry serve as symbols of economic boom and economic crisis respectively the bench on which peter is seen seated when the play begins symbolizes peter's self sufficiency and his stability jerry himself is portrayed in the play as a tragic example and a universal symbol of the alienated modern man to conclude combining the real and the absurd albi has created the play with characters facing issues of isolation alienation class difference absurdity of human life he explores the themes of existentialism and absurdism he points out that human life is basically absurd and confusing and therefore communication through language is equally absurd jerry comes out as a perfect symbol of the absurdist individuals who are acutely conscious of the hopelessness around them and whose consciousness makes them suffer miserably thank you